Hi, welcome to how to create a search 1.2. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create the same exact thing as how to create a search 1, but I'm going to show you how to do it in one formula. So it'll look exactly the same. So if I type in A and D R E, it's going to give me Andrew. If I type in B R, it's going to give me all the B R's, and so on and so forth. So in this video, it's going to get a little bit complex. We're going to use something called array functions. Um, ultimately the search will be the underlying component of our of our engine but it's instead of taking in one value we're going to use an array of values we're going to create our search function a lot of times how I build formulas is I like to sort of build the most integral parts and then kind of build out on them so this function isn't actually going to sit on the outside we're going to add stuff to the outer parts but this is like the most integral part of or what the entire formula will do so the search function, we're going to find text, and it's going to be our search box. We're going to look within, and now here's how it's different. Instead of looking in one value, we're going to look through an array. So I'm going to just highlight, just to show this, I'm going to highlight. I'm going to F4 on both those, and close it out. And so what that's going to give you is a 1, but if I highlight this, and I go to calculate now, it's going to give us an array of ones. So it's basically Excel thinks that there's a blank in front of each one of these um, strings. So that's why we see one, one, one. Uh, you can also hit F9 to get this array syntax. By the way, an array syntax always has a curly bracket in the front and in the back. Each one of these semicolons represents a different row. So if I hit Control Z, it's going to give me my formula back. Okay, so that's the first part of what we want to do. What we're trying to do is create unique identifiers for each one of these each one of these names. Let's go ahead and put an A into our search box. And if we highlight this again, go to calculate now, it's going to give me value errors, right? Um, so what that value error means is that it but in that seventh cell there is no A there. So it gives me an error because well, I can't find that. So if we back out of this again, we can actually use if error, comma null. And if we highlight this whole array again, if you hit F9 or you go to calculate now, it will give you blanks there. And that's exactly what we're going to need, because what we need to do is pull the smallest number in this array out and then find that smallest number. The smallest number represents the most relevant names, right? So if it has one, it means that A sits in the first part of the string. So if I back out of that, we go, we highlight it and go calculate now. We're going to have several ones. So we have a one here, we have a one there, a one there, and so on and so forth. Um, so as our array gets bigger, we're going to have even more ones. So what we want to do is differentiate the ones by their placement within that row. And how we do that is well, at least how I'm going to show you how to do it is with the row function. So I'm going to go plus row, and I'm going to highlight that same array like that. And close it off. I'm going to hit F4 because we want that to stay the same as we drag it down. And if I highlight this again, calculate now, it's going to add the row to it. But that's not going to help us out because that really isn't going to differentiate it. So you'll notice that we have two 12s there, right? So that, that really didn't help. So what we can do instead is take this row and we divide it by a thousand. So that's going to make sure that we don't alter our relevancy. It's it's going to make such a small difference that it's not going to destroy our rank. So that's what the search is basically doing. It's creating an array of ranks and this plus just makes it slightly different from the other ones so we have something to choose from. So if we highlight this whole thing now and hit calculate now you can see that we have 6.006 .006 as our first one, which means that it is sitting in the sixth row because 6 divided by 1,000 is 0 .006, and so on and so forth. So it goes 0 .007, 0 .008. So what that does is it creates a unique value for each one of these items. So if I control Z back out of that. So what do we need to do? we need to pick out the smallest value, right? Because the smallest one is going to be the most relevant. So if I go small, my raise here, and my k means the, you know, what number smallest. First smallest, second smallest, third smallest, and so on and so forth. So as I drag this formula down, I want it to say first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. 
So we can't just put one here, right? Because one is static. If I drag it down, it'll always be one. It'll just pick out the same number. So what I would rather do is rows function, and I'm going to go rows d6, which is where my uh, function sits through d6. I'm going to make one in absolute reference. And so what that is, is it's an expanding range. And if we highlight just rows and we hit calculate now, it's going to give me one. But as I drag it down, if I go d6 to d7, because it expands, it's going to give me two, and so on and so forth. So that's going to be our incrementer. So it's going to be small, this range, pick out the first smallest, and then the second one's going to go pick out the second smallest, and so on and so forth. So I can close that off, hit Control shift enter That gives me 1.007. Well, hey, how are we going to pull Andrew based on 1.007? Well, good question. What we can do is we can match. We can use our match function. So we're going to match this array within, guess what, we already made the array. So I can grab it right here. Actually, I'm going to take it from the if error, copy that, and paste it there. And so we're matching that, that first, the smallest part of that array within the bigger array. So as we drag it down, we're going to be matching the second smallest within that array. So if I go, if I close that off, and hit Control shift enter gives me two. One, two. Okay, so that's, we're getting closer. Um, so now we're going to use something called an index function. You can actually use an indirect here too, but for the sake of this video, I'll show you how index works. So I'm going to go index. I'm going to highlight that same array, and I'm going to press F4. And our row number is being made by this match, and I close it off. It should give me Andrew. Awesome. So if I drag this down, hmm, something didn't work. The reason it didn't work was be we forgot to say it was an exact match. So let's see, if I look at my index, my match, so if I go comma, zero, exact match, control shift enter, drag it down, and there you go. So if I go B, and we have a working search. And the one thing we can do to get rid of the errors is just highlight the whole thing with an if error. And our value is that. And our value if error is going to be double quotation or null. Control shift enter. Drag it down. And what we have is our workable search. Oops. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions. My email is xlsxgeek at gmail.com. I'll be happy to uh, answer anything you have. I'll try to make more and more videos. Uh, I know it's been a while, so um, I'll do my best. All right.